on today's presentation about service function training. My name is Kathy Zhang. I'm a principal architect at Huawei Silicon Valley Center. Hi, uh, my name is Swaminathan Vasudevan, and uh, I'm working for HP. So I'm an te active technical contributor in OpenStack. Uh, my name is Stephen Wong. I work for vArmor, the company that provides a uh, solutions for a security solutions for cloud. So what is service chaining? Um, by service chaining, what we mean is that a service function can be automatically inserted into a tenant's flow path, and the flows, uh, the flows transportation path can be automatically changed without um, recabling the network devices, uh, without um, manual configurations. So this functionality is currently missing in Neutron. So that's why that's how why networking dash SFC project comes in to fill this gap. So the through this project, we're going to provide a subchain API that will allow different tenant traffic flows to be automatically provisioned to go through different sequences of service functions, so that to get customized service treatment, and these service function can run on a VM or a hardware box. So this slide shows the architecture of the uh, service chain. On the top is the Neutron server. The bottom are a few um, compute nodes. The yellow boxes, the yellow boxes shows the functional modules that support this service chain functionality. So the Neutron uh, service chain plugin, which is um, um, put inside the Neutron server, has a very similar architecture to the ML2 plugin. On the northbound is a Neutron uh, service chain API. And then there's a service chain driver manager, which provides a common service chain driver API to the southbound uh, service chain drivers. So there could be different type of service chain drivers that plug it into this, uh, um, this Neutron server to provide um, the setup of the uh, service function chain path in the data, in the data plan. For example, you can, we can provide, we can plug in an OBS service chain driver. We can plug in different controllers service chain driver. For example, ODL driver, ODL and ONOS driver, and o, even your own company's SDN controller driver. And then you know through your own SDN controller, it can talk through OpenFlow protocol to the o, to the OBS agent on the compute node or to your switches, uh, hardware switches on the uh, on the hardware switches, and then the data pass uh, subchain will be uh, automatically set up. So here, uh, this slide gives an overview of the API. Um, there are two parts of the subchain API. One part is a flow classifier. So you can specify uh, one or more flow classifier associated with the uh, subchain APIs. The flow classifiers identifies what type of flows that will go through this chain. The second part of the service chain API is a sequence of port pair groups. It's an ordered sequence of port pair groups. And each port pair group uh, is, a uh, is a group of functional-like service functions. For example, if you have like two firewall VMs, you can group them together into one port pair group for load distribution purpose, so that you know when the traffic flow goes through this um, firewall port pair group, it can automatically you know on to do load balancing to to select one um, service function, one firewall VM to serve the uh, the flow, and then so for example on the bottom we show uh, example chain like the traffic flow needs to go first goes through an IPS service function, and then a firewall service function, and then a video optimizer service function. So for this chain to be set up, we need to specify three port pair groups. One port pair group for the IPS, another port pair group for the firewall, and the third port pair group for the video optimizer. For example, if you have, for example, the firewall, you have three firewall um, um, VMs, and then you group them into a firewall port pair group. So this slide shows the um, detail on service chain APIs. There are four APIs uh, involved. Um, first, you, we create a neutron port pair 
uh, for each service function. For example, uh, like for service function firewall, for firewall VM, you know, it's going to have an uh, ingress neutron port and egress neutron port. Of course, if some service function, these two ports can be the same, that's okay. So when we create the port pair for that service function, we will specify uh, what's the ingress neutron port and what is the egress neutron port. Uh, we can also specify the service function chain, service function parameters associated with that specific service function. For example, what kind of service chain encapsulation mechanism that service function support? You can specify the encapsulation mechanism that service function support in this parameter. So after that, we create the port pair group. Uh, as we mentioned before, this is a group of functional like service functions. So we can group, uh, you know, in this specification, we can group multiple port pairs uh, with each port pair for uh, one service function uh, instance. So then the third step is to cl uh, create the flow classifier. So there are um, two types. There are two ways you can specify um, the flow classifier. One way is to specify the n tuple of the flow. Um, this can be up to the uh, L7 parameter. You can specify up to the URL, um, uh, URL link level. Uh, another way to specify the flow classifier is specify the neutron port. For example, you can specify, say, any traffic that, uh, that uh, enters in through this neutron port need to go through the chain, then you specify the source neutron port. Or you can specify, say, uh, any traffic that exit a neutron port needs to go through this service chain treatment. Then you specify the, uh, the destination uh, um, neutron port. Or you can specify a source neutron port and destination neutron port, and then that means the traffic that goes between these two ports will need to go through this chain. And last, um, we, you can, we, we create the port chain through this port chain uh, API create. Um, so here we specify the sequence of the port pair groups. And we can specify a flow classifier associated with this port chain, or we, can, uh, we, or we do not need to specify any flow classifier. If no flow classifier is specified for the port pair for the port chain during creation, that means this port chain is created but it's not active. Um, then later, you can use port chain update to associate one or more flow classifiers uh, with that chain. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Kathy explained about the APIs, and um, this actually picture shows you the flow, the control flow, how the uh, APIs basically work. So if you look at the uh, x-axis and the y-axis here, so uh, here the, the client, uh, this, this denotes the client operations or an API orchestration layer, and this one denotes the neutron uh, plugin or an extension for the port chain. And um, here is the flow classifier extension, as um, Kathy mentioned. So flow classifier is a separate entity uh, not associated directly into the uh, port chain functionality. So we have two extensions. In future, this flow classifier extension may fall into uh, a core uh, neutron uh, feature that can be utilized by multiple uh, functions in, in neutron. It need not be just used by the uh, port chain functionality, but it can be used by uh, many other programs that is in neutron. So that uh, will become a, an extension. Right now it's an extension, but it can become a, a core later because there is a, a blueprint that has been um, in discussion right now to have this flow classifier, more, more enhanced flow classifier. So right now the flow classifier that we have uh, targeted is uh, limited and um, it, it is extensible, but it is limited right now targeting the port chain functionality. And then uh, we have this service chain OVS driver that's in the uh, server side that tries to communicate to the agent to forward all the traffic. And uh, we have the service VM infrastructure. Um, so this is basically, uh, this is not done by this group, but I think the infrastructure is there right now, either through the heat or through Tacker program, that we can have service VMs deployed. Uh, and based on uh, what service VMs are deployed, uh, based on that, we can actually utilize the service functionality that we wanted. And then we have uh, the service chain OVS agent running on uh, each and every compute node that actually uh, tries to address uh, the issues uh, based on uh, the driver's communication. 
So here, uh, the first thing that we do is either uh, this can be shuffled around these two uh, things. Either we can create the port first and then identify the ports, define the egress and ingress port, and then create, try to create a VM on top of the ports. Or it can be you can first create a service VM, then identify the ports that are part of the service VM, uh, egress and ingress port. Uh, if you want to have a single port, it's fine. You can still have a single port as in both ingress and egress. But uh, if you want, if you have two different ports, you can actually specify it as ingress and egress port. I think Kathy, uh, in her session at 2 o'clock, she showed a demo, like how to configure, uh, because um, we, ha we do have uh, a patch right now in Horizon that actually addresses how to configure. It's pretty uh, simple and easy to go through that. So you can actually pick and choose what are the ports that you have, and then create a port patch based on that. So the next one you normally do is, uh, so when you create uh, a VM, so this is basically utilizing the service VM infrastructure. So it creates the VM, then you identify the ports. And then once you identify the ports, you, you know what are the port pairs that you are going to uh, create. So uh, first thing you create is the port pairs. So once you create the port pairs, so none of the action is being taken. So the only action that is taken is like you, you do have a DB object that's being created for the port pairs. So the next one is, is basically the port pair groups, as um, Kathy mentioned um, in her slide. So we normally wanted to create a port pair groups. Uh, it can be just a single port pair in the port pair group, or you can have multiple port pairs in the same port pair group. So it depends upon the use cases. If you want uh, high availability and, and scalability, you can actually go in for uh, multiple port pairs uh, within the same group. And then, um, so then you define your flow classifier. So ba basically, as I mentioned, the flow classifier uh, is an extension right now, and it can become a core, and it is more extensible uh, in future that you can add uh, more uh, valid functionalities in there where you can actually um, classify the traffic based on um, source address, IP address, uh, and then source port, uh, destination port. And then we, we, we can also have um, n number of tuples to actually go through the flow classifier. So, um, th th so I have a picture in here which shows the defined chain parameter. So this is defined as part of um, creating your uh, port pairs. So once you create all these entities um, in your uh, neutron infrastructure, then you create your port chaining. So you basically what you need to create a port chain is, uh, so you need your port pairs, you need your port groups, and you need a flow classifier being defined. So once you have the flow classifier defined, you can attach it to, your, um, to the port chain. Uh, and uh, as Kathy mentioned, I think uh, recently we, we had a review comment based on the review comments. We did made, make a small change in there. Uh, so we can still go ahead and create a port chain uh, without a flow classifier, but that would uh, still trigger an RPC message going back to the agent to set up the flows ahead of time for you. So once you have the, um, all the setups done, then you can actually add a flow classifier later, and then based on the flow classifier that you have added, it will traverse the packets, and then based on that, it will actually uh, move the packets to the next hop, whatever it wanted to move on. So this picture shows you, like, uh, once you create a, a port chaining with the flow classifier, so this creates a callback and a notify function uh, to the service chain driver. And then the service chain driver actually uh, notifies the agent through RPC communications. And then this uh, OBS agent in here creates your uh, flows. And then the, the packet actually flows from um, one service function to another service function. So this is basically the control flow. And, and then Kathy is going to talk about uh, where are we right now with respect to uh, service chaining, and then what's our future plans. And then we'll go ahead with uh, what are the other considerations that we would be doing for service chaining with respect to performance, scalability, and enhanceability. So here I'm going to um, give a very um, brief introduction of the service chain data plan with service chain header and the VSLAN tunnel. So on the right side, you see this is a compute node. So we have VM on the top. It connects with the integration bridge through the ingress port, egress port. And then the integration bridge connects with the tunnel bridge through the patch port. And then tunnel bridge connects with external network through a VSLAN tunnel. So on the left side, it's a packet format. So the VM's format comes out is the original packet plus its own uh, Ethernet header. The integration bridge get this packet is going to add a search chain header. So here you will see it's called, as it says, MPLS. But this MPLS has nothing to do with the MPLS transport. We just leverage the MPLS label to use it for the chain ID. 
The reason is because current OVS support MPS. It doesn't support the new service chain header, uh, which are proposed in the IETF uh, standard. Uh, so in the future, when OVS support the uh, new service chain header, we can easily replace this MPLS fields with the new service chain header fields. And then you know when this packet goes to the uh, tunnel bridge, tunnel bridge is going to add the external VSLAN header. So here we use uh, our implementation is use a VSLAN, but actually the transport, external transport, you can use and you can use IP, you can use you know GRE tunnel, so it's it's transparent. So so that's uh, so in this format, so the uh, service chain packet uh, is actually in as an inner packet of the um, VSLAN, uh, uh, tu VSLAN tunnel um, packet. So, uh, it, so external network, no matter what type, it can be transported over that transparently. So here's uh, uh, some information about our project. Uh, this project started in Liberty cycle. Uh, it's going to be released in M cycle. Uh, we, uh, the, we already implement the code. Uh, in in the networking dash SFC repo, uh, this is an OpenStack neutral approved uh, repo for uh, this project. And so we have CLI code, we have Horizon code, Heat code. We also have you know the neutron server code, which includes API, DB driver manager, common driver API, and OBS driver. We also have codes on OBS agent. Um, uh, we also have codes of OBS agent on the compute nodes uh, to implement the uh, data path. And here are some information links on this project. So if anyone has interest, would like to know more about it, you can welcome to go to these links. Also, we have um, on every Thursday uh, morning, 10 o'clock Pacific time, we have project meetings, IRC project meetings. So anyone has interest to contribute, are uh, welcome to join. So this is our plan for the uh, IAM cycle and future. So first, we are going to wrap up current work and get the codes ready for release. And then we are going to start working on support for a mixed chain of service functions hosted on VM, container, and physical device. Yeah, I'm going to talk later how we can do that. So currently, we only support service function hosted on VM. And then we are going to uh, you know, enhance the scalability and performance of existing implementation. And then we're also going to invest in integration with Tucker. Uh, we have a slide talk about that. Um, we're going to also support integration of neutron service function chain with different types of SDN controllers. For example, with ONOS controller, with ODL controller, with OVN controller. So it could be any types of SDN controller. So this diagram, this uh, slide shows uh, the uh, mixed uh, chain of service function uh, on con VM container and physical device. So we're going to support this through a neutron port attachment API for containers and physical uh, service device. As far as I know, there's already work started on this. Uh, and so we we're going to work with, that, with people who has uh, already started this work. So in order to support service function chain, what we need is, you know, um, the, this API needs to have information on, of two parts of information. One part is a neutron port of the container or physical device. Another part is a service function parameters because like different type of service function um, parameters, they could have different uh, uh, information. For example, we need to know what kind of service function type uh, is, hosting, is hosted on the container or on the physical device. What is the service function's locator information, such as IP address or MAC address, and also service function load status. So this is for you know the load distribution purpose, and then the service function chain encapsulation method. So what kind of encapsulation method the service function support? If it doesn't support any encapsulation method, and then the switch that you know sitting at the front of the uh, service function has to act as a service function proxy. So um, as our API is built on neutron port, the service chain API is a neutron port API. So as long as the containers has neutron port and physical device has neutron port, it can be naturally chained into this uh, service chain. So the bottom uh, diagram just shows an example of uh, uh, different service functions running on different uh, you know, um, uh, containers, physical device, or VMs. 
So uh, for ex we talked about like uh, what we can do next uh, to increase the extensibility, scalability, and performance. So uh, as I mentioned, this has been designed to have a, an extension, and you can actually um, extends, extend the whole uh, feature and functionality um, of the flow classifier to include uh, more complex uh, filtering that we wanted to do and classify the traffic as quick as possible. So. Uh, the first target that we are targeting is basically uh, OBS-based port chaining, and uh, it can be extended to uh, multiple drivers. So right now, we are targeted to write uh, only the OBS driver. So this is during the Mitaka time frame. And if anyone is interested to write any other drivers, uh, you can still contact our, our team or uh, Kathy, or you can actually chime into the IRC channels uh, during our meetings. And then, um, as I mentioned, uh, the flow classifier has been designed to support n tuples, and today we are just using the phi tuple one, but we can actually go ahead and uh, go for uh, the n tuple one. And um, when we design the flow classifier, um, the performance considerations that we, we would be taking is basically uh, the search speed, uh, ability to handle uh, the real classifier, uh, real life classifiers. Uh, scalability, number of header fields. As I mentioned, that we have uh, uh, n-tuples, so we can actually do a lot of things in there. And then um, flexibility in specifications. So we need to consider like what of what much storage is required and memory consumption it's using. Uh, so either we can uh, later offload it to a hardware. Right now we can we are targeting only to do it in software, but later we can still do it in uh, hardware-based classifiers. So, uh, extent, so if you talk about performance, so if you are targeting the workloads to be uh, a virtual appliance-based workloads, so it basically makes sense to have all your uh, virtual appliances um, co-located uh, within a single VM, uh, single node uh, hypervisor, so that you can have uh, enough performance in hopping uh, the traffic from one node to another node. Uh, but I think if you are targeting a mixture of hardware and, and virtual appliances, uh, so you can still go ahead with this one. Uh, our uh, infrastructure will still support it. Uh, and then uh, basically, if you have everything done through a hardware, uh, it, it's pretty much easy to go through because it's all uh, VXLAN tunnels that you are trying to create from one end to another end. And then uh, as we spoke about the, the groups, service chain groups, so when you create port pair groups, uh, it provides you uh, um, kind of uh, scalability and HA. And based on your needs, you can actually create uh, multiple service groups, that uh, port pair groups based on your requirements. And uh, your port pair groups uh, can be co-located within the same node, or it can be uh, distributed uh, across the nodes for uh, higher availability. Uh, so right now, I think uh, the way that we uh, make decisions on the uh, OBS, it's been taken care of by uh, the OBS itself. So it tries to actually load balance uh, the traffic based on the port pair groups that you have defined. So I'll hand it over to Stefan. That was fine. Thank you. Uh, so one of the well, one of the uh, primary goal for the for the Mbitaka cycle is to actually do integrations with various different projects. So the primary point of integrations on the southbound side is our plugin and driver framework. Currently, for the um, for the for the patches on flight, uh, everything is going through a service plugin, and uh, so flow classifier as well as uh, port chain. And as both of these folks actually alluded to many times, on the on the Mitaka cycle, we do expect the flow classifier uh, to be split off and probably go into a neutron core. Repo. The motivation behind that, the major motivation behind that, is because the firewall as a service and QoS both actually require a flow classifier. And as actually Kathy alluded to, we support a list of drivers. So that actually allows you to uh, have different network segments provided by different network drivers, and then, and then you'll be able to plug them all in in an order fashion. But there's actually other motivations behind splitting off, well, not splitting off, but separations of flow classifiers and port chain APIs also. On a very traditional SDN controller uh, integrations, um, they like to actually have a flow programming interface and a config connectivity interface that are separated. So we model it after this. And then, and then for many of the traditional and conventional SDN solutions that we know of today, like Onos, which one of our SFC team members are committed, is committed to actually doing for Metaka. Uh, is actually having flow interface and a config, and config topology interface that are separated. 
So that actually aligns very well with, uh, with the conventional SDN solutions for things that are actually like Linux bridge, for example. Uh, if you want to write drivers of this, um, they don't have flow classification capabilities. Um, Uh, they don't have flow classification uh, capabilities, so most likely you would have to uh, create a flow drivers for some external flow classifiers, and uh, and then have some sort of and then your network drivers would either be Linux bridge or some sort of in this case some sort of MPLS fabric drivers that goes into there. So these two types of integrations are both possible using this current uh, API sets, um, and then one use case that actually having flow classifier. Being independent is we don't really have to associate a flow classifier to a, to a service chain. And this is basically, in essence, a way to say that a chain is admin down. So a chain is not enabled until you actually have a flow classifier associated with that. So that's for integrating with things that do not have SFC support. Uh, for that there are actually SDN solutions today, open source ones, that has native SFC supports. That's including Open Control, actually, and much more famous Open Daylight. The Open Daylight SFC program uh, in service actually uh, maps extremely well with uh, our networking SFC in, uh, interfaces. Uh, they too actually separated out the service classifiers and the chain interfaces. So, you know, in this case, the, the, the southbound uses OpenFlow to, to do flows, and then they use OVSDB to set up the um, the, the topology, um, but we don't. So our API actually maps very well with them on the SFP side. So they have. So this is actually a. So Open Daylight actually, SFC has two separate constructs. They want. They like to separate out the SFC part, which is the logical constructs of the of a chain, uh, from the SFP part, which is the path construct, which is deployment construct. Networking SFC actually fits very well with the SFP part. Uh, the SFC part is high-level constructs of what the chain is. There's something actually we will likely never support on uh, networking SFC. The reason why is for OpenStack, because creating a logical construct of a chain is basically a template of a chain. And in OpenStack, there's actually very well-known projects to set up a template. That would be heat. Um, and particularly for the NFV use case, the uh, there's actually many other projects that would be able to create things that are not even uh, native constructs that Heat can actually look at that they would be able to manage. And then OpenStack Tacker is one such example. Uh, on NFE use case, you normally pull down a, um, a Tasker template. Uh, actually, you, you, you started off with an app catalog, uh, pull down a, a YAML template. Uh, and, then, and, then the AP, and then the Tacker API, in this case, the Tacker server, would onboard through heat to onboard all the, uh, all the service VMs. And then when a chain is being set up, so currently Tosca, the Oasis Tosca center body is creating a VNF FG uh, extensions. And then that would allow us to actually set up the chain based on our service graph, actually. VNF FG is a forwarding graph. So there will be service graph that is being set up, and then we can actually set it up. A service graph is a composition of chains. So our API being going into the port level is actually extremely fitting uh, for creating a service graph. So a service graph is basically concatenation of chains and then using flow classifiers as the splitting points to go into different vertices. So we can easily do that. So for a very long time, um, all the things like Tacker, Heat, uh, App Catalog would mostly uh, be provided by Moreno. And, uh, well, Nova is actually the one that creates all the VMs. And then, and then the network connectivities of the VMs are provided by Neutron. For a very long time, the only thing that really is missing for end-to-end -end NFV solutions is the ability to, for Neutron to create, a to create a chain that deviates from the traditional L2 and L3 forwarding. And then as we alluded to actually during the, uh, the subject of our talk, the wait is finally over, that now we actually have a service chain API in Neutron that allows you to create end-to-end -end stories from onboarding and, and app catalog and onboarding all, the, all your service, virtual network functions or network services all the way down to deploying it and creating a chain to actually, a graph to actually push the traffic over. 
And for that, if you want to learn more, we have a wiki page. Uh, some of our team members did a very good job of putting the docs together. So please read them if you really are interested. On Thursday, uh, we have a design summit session on 4.30 in the uh, crown room, which I believe in Sakura Tower. Uh, uh, and uh, actually, there's a, yeah, there's also Etherpad. I should, I, there's no link on for Etherpad, but it should be there. Uh, and then please come if you want to actually talk about it. And we, we welcome any community members to come in. And if you, after all of this, you're still interested, every Thursday, we are having an IOC meetings on OpenStack meetings for 1700 UTC. Um, we are, so on customary to all the OpenStack meetings, the, the week after the summit, we kind of slack. So the next meeting won't, won't happen until the 12th, I think, November 12th. So, oops, thank you. Any questions? <laughs> oh yeah, if you have questions, uh, please come to the mic. I had two questions. The, the first one was, in addition to this API, I've looked at the, uh, the uh, group policy API, which also has a service function capability. Um, is that API supposed to map into this API, or how does that work? Oh. <laughs> well, I guess I'm supposed to answer that one. Um, so the... Uh, that one of the things in, in, in group policy is when you identify basically a flow, I believe one of the actions that can happen is called a redirect, yeah. and that's their mechanism of doing service chaining. And mm -hmm. so far, what I've read is that basically that the group policy basically, for, for, for everything other than service chaining, because I, I knew about this API, but for everything other than service chaining, it just maps, there's a, it, all of the objects which are associated with the group policy mapped to a neutron object. Is the same going to be true for this, or how's yeah, that? Yeah, so um, for the group-based policy project, the, the reference implementation is actually the, um, the neutron mapping driver, the resource mapping drivers. The for for group-based policy, right? Yeah. For group-based policy, the, the reference implementations on group-based policy is uh, uh, the neutron mapping, resource right. mapping drivers. So for a very long time, because neutron doesn't have that construct, uh, that mapping drivers basically maps all the traffic to the chain once you associate that with a port, with, a, with an EP, with an EPG. So that, that is independent of actually having a flow. So the APIs are actually more or less um, staging, they're, they're heat-based. So the, the, the implementation that the chain is actually created. So that there are two pieces, right? There's one which has the policy the, that redirects the, policy the, redirect part, the traffic the to part. a chain. There's right. another one that actually creates a chain. Yes. And uh, so the, the redirect to a chain uh, is on the reference implementations. It is actually because Neutron lacks this API, uh, it doesn't really work in terms of having a particular flow of traffic going to the chain. OK. Yeah. Uh, so the second part is actually a service chaining portion, which um, my understanding is, is the API actually calls heat for implementation. The, the API for what? I'm the sorry. API inside is actually creating heat templates. Uh, yeah. yeah, for service chain. For group policy, you're talking about it for what? So, so, so group policy has a group policy construct. Group and policy there's actually a, which a maps service to function chaining. There's actually a service function chaining uh, uh, API, a group based policy also. Okay, I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to take this offline. I'd like to see a, I'd like to see a diagram showing, because uh, oh, okay. so far, it, it, uh, my understanding is all I've seen is that these two IPIs are kind of like at the side of each other, mm -hmm. whereas I was expecting them. Yeah, the so, neutron so for service the resource chain resource mapping flow. drivers, they can definitely leverage our service okay. chaining API to okay. make it much more workable and functional. Yeah, I, yeah. I, would, I would like to say group-based policy and service chain API proposed here, there are different abstraction level. Yes. You know, I think here is more a logical port level, and group-based policy is more like a policy I, level. So I, I it, agree, uh, but at the bottom, the bottom line's got to be if it's going to work with this, it's the group policy's got to map be, down we, to this no, API. Well, we yeah. map yeah. down yeah. right here, yeah. but how to do that mapping? That's kind of you know out scope of this project. But I think there oh, should okay. be a way of yeah. do the mapping. So, okay. yeah. so theoretically, the the resource mapping drivers should actually leverage this API. Th that's what I would expect. This. And then and then we would like to see that. Uh, okay, so you're yeah. not working with them yet, then. 
Uh, no, not directly. Okay, all right. Then the second question had to do with the MPLS labels. I was a little unclear exactly what the MPLS label is used for. Okay, so... Um, so the yeah, go back to the picture. Yeah, here. So the here, um, the MPS label, okay, it's just used to um, for the carry the service chain ID. Actually, it's a temporary uh, implementation to show that you know um, if we have a service chain ID in the data pass, the flow table can be much more simplified because instead of you know you forwarding and based on the five tuple or seven tuple, eleven tuple, you just just based on this chain ID, right? Um, so this is a, like a temporary um, placeholder for um, for carrying the chain ID yes, yes. in the future. Uh, it's because current OVS support MPS. It doesn't support the new service chain header. But in okay. the future, if it's supported, the OVS open source community support the new service chain header, we can easily replace this okay. MPS with the new service chain header. So yeah. the MPLS label is added and taken off in the OVS layer before it ever hits the, uh, hits the actual function, the, right? Yeah, function. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. okay. so it's basically a tag. Yeah. Use it as okay. a tag yeah, just to, a tag. To speed so up right, it's right, a little bit confusing when we say MPS, but actually right. we are using that label right. to carry the chain ID. It's a tag, yeah. Okay. 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 I have a question regarding your flow classification um, the in the data plane. Flow oh, the flow classification. The flow classification in the data plane. Um, I can understand how it works if you specify it together with an ingress port. But if you specify your flow classifiers without ingress port, how do you know where to deploy these flow classifiers, when to send root packets to tables to classify the flow? Because if you match on IP addresses, they are only kind of unique within the context of a network or a subnet. And it could be if you deploy it everywhere on every packet that enters an OVS switch, then you create havoc. Yeah, that's a good question. So um, if you want very good performance, right? You specify the neutron port, right? So you know where the traffic will uh, enter the flow, right? You just put the classifier at that point. But if you don't specify the neutron port, you just specify five tuple, n tuple, right? You don't know where it's going to come from, right? So then the classification has to put on all the OVS, mm -hmm. you know, switch. So the performance will be uh, a little bit uh, uh, impacted, yeah but because you don't know where the traffic will come from. So for some scenarios, um, this cannot be avoided. But for some scenarios, like for the GR line scenario, you know where the traffic will come from. You have a specific entry point, that's PGW. So you can put the classifier at that place, right? But for example, for data center, east-west traffic, right? It could be originated from any, um, any server, right? Then you have to put the classifier inside yeah. you know, all those places too. Yeah, exactly. That is the point I was trying to come to. Uh, your model is not rich enough to kind of express that, that you bind a classifier, for example, to a VPN or to a, to a network rather than to an ingress port. Because of the, I mean, Somehow. the IP, address, IP addresses are not, sorry, IP addresses are not unique, right? So, I mean, just deploying a filter everywhere will create havoc. You have to, you have to kind of provide it with the right scope. Um, so you say install, it, install it on all the ports that belong to a network or to a set of networks. I think you're specifying that here. we need to apply the chaining with respect to networks rather than ports. So. Uh, rather than ports, yeah. you mean yeah. the the flow classifier? But uh, what, 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 sorry, I no, have so, a hard time. So you want you want to apply traffic to like from one subnet to another subnet, for example, right? Oh, so you're talking on about a, the traffic of the chain from one subnet to another subnet? I talk for about example, this yes. But I mean, if you look at uh, group-based policies, it's even more flexible. Oh yeah. So for to support that, right? If you from one subnet to another subnet, right? You have a uh, uh, the subnet entry. Point, right? You can, as long as this subnet has a, a exit point of a neutron port, and then that means you connect this neutron port to the next subnet's neutron port. So these two are kind of like a two, you can model it as two service functions, and then you connect them together. Well, I think we can take the discussion oh, offline. Well, so, it's so too a, detailed. A network, a network port group construct is not really a neutron yet, so we work with whatever is on a neutron. So whether or not we should introduce a group constructs inside Neutron, that's probably outside the scope of SFC at this point. Thank you. I have a quick question. 
I think I know the answer, but let Maybe me you just want to go to the but let me just confirm it. So for downstream traffic, if you have a flow classifier, what's the solution? You guys just put a static route inside the net namespace for that. For downstream, for upstream traffic, everything works fine. For downstream, what do you guys do? Let's say two cases. Case one, you do have a flow classifier, and case two, where you guys do classification in the OBS. Mm -hmm. So if you have a flow classifier, I assume the solution is you put a static route in the net namespace in the net network node. Is that right? Yeah, so for you to say downstream is the other direction, right? You're talking about one direction, this no. side, right, the Right, from the server, from the internet to the client, yeah. So from the other direction. Yes. Then, you know, at the entry point, you put the flow classifier there. So, so bidirectional chain is modeled as two chains because it goes through different uh, sequences of service function. So you know, for example, port, even you, from this direction, you go through IPS and then firewall. So mm -hmm. that's the chain is IPS firewall, IPS first. The other direction is firewall first. IPS second. Well, so the it's a different so chain. What you're asking is whether or not we, if a case where we go north to south, we go, we're going from internet going into exactly. into the, yes. into, into data center. The network, then the, the network, then the network node would have to have the classifiers for yeah, all traffic that, that are coming entry point, in. You'll so you put a static route inside the net namespace and send it to a classifier. How else that. will the traffic? So it comes in from the internet. It goes through the network node. It does a NAT. It then then goes to the net namespace. Mm -hmm. So you guys put the, the classifier inside the net namespace. Where do you guys put it? So when you say uh, uh, traffic enter the data center, are you talking about the internet traffic goes to the data center? Yes. You have yeah. to put the classifier at that um, the the at the, at the, 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 the edge yeah. route, okay. router. Yeah. For a particular right. tenant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. So last question. Really? Yeah. Hopefully my question is not as complicated as theirs. Um, how, how do you plan to support VMs that use SRIOV? Because in the VNFs that you've shown, SRIOV is a reality. And uh, all of your methodology is based upon classification in the OBS. We would, we would actually expect SRIOV to have a driver that doesn't use OBS. <laughs> I'm sorry, say that again? I would, we would expect SRIOV-based VMs to actually have their own network driver. But where would the flow classification and all the chain ID, et cetera, happen? Are you expecting that to happen in the NIC or in the embedded switch or in the top of rack switch? And is, is that the understanding? So in, in the case of SRIOV, you bypass the V-switch. And then, and then, and then the, 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 the question is, if it goes out of SRIOV, how do we tag the MPLS label? If it goes out of, uh, yeah. so it doesn't go through the switch. It doesn't no, it go through doesn't, the switch. It doesn't get hit by the flow. It doesn't even hit the switch V switch. Oh, okay. So then you need to put that into the NIC card. Are you talking about that? Yeah. NIC then card. you have need to put this function in the NIC card. Yeah. Or, so or, here. Or in that case, if you don't have a label construct in directly into the NIC, then you have to basically send it to a classifier engine somewhere. So, so here, when we say we implement in OBS, it's just a reference implementation. Mm -hmm. So you, you can put the, like the classifier, right? Now currently we do it in OBS. You can as a DPI, a dedicated DPI device to do it. So it's, it's, it's you know, just we haven't got a chance to implement that. Mm -hmm. Or if you say it doesn't go through the vSwitch, then you have to implement in the uh, NIC card. Or if it, or so, in your so physical about switch. Our, 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 driver, our driver interface allows you to yeah. create a bunch to of create drivers. Different drivers. So some of them may be OBS, the other one may not be. So okay. our API is generic, you know, and then the bottom the southbound, they can plug in different drivers to do the implementation. Okay, thank you. Okay, welcome. Okay, yeah, I think I know some people are going to go to the yeah, core the approval party, so <laughs> yeah. I think thank, that's you. It. thank you. Thank you. Guys.